we have a real treat today because we're going to be talking herbs. I feel that that's kind of really appropriate. I am at the moment in a converted old showman's wagon in the middle of a field in the middle of nowhere. And it was absolutely amazing. Woke up this morning with sunrise, went out, walked in the fields, just listening to the early morning bird song, connecting with nature, really lovely. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to connect with nature and we're going to do a deep dive, especially looking at herbs for women, for female health, looking at herbs for perimenopause and menopause, herbs for stress. If you've got any questions about herbs, do you use herbs? Are those tinctures? Maybe you just drink herb teas. Maybe you're a big fan. Maybe you've never tried. So today is the day when we are going to explore. And just to say before we get into that, I'm sitting here with, um, I've actually got a little pot of raspberries, English raspberries with me for a reason, because you may have seen my live earlier this week with Kelsey Skincare. So I brought some of their products with me because I thought I'm going to have a little bit of me time while I'm away. And I was using this one first thing I popped it on my own Instagram. You might have seen a picture on my stories. It's called the Mother of Masks and it's this really lovely kind of bright pink, pink thing made with um, raspberry seed extract. So very botanical. And oh my gosh, my skin is just glowing. And I thought I was getting ready for the live and I thought, no, I'm not going to put any foundation on. I'm just going to, I'm just going to leave my skin, you know, I'll put a bit of mascara on whatever, but that's it. So well done guys. It was lovely to chat to you. British farming family. Of course, there's a Liz Loves on them as well. So yeah. Highly recommended. Anyway, let's get into chats about other kinds of botanicals. Before we do that, I am going to get Lainey to join us from our team. So Lainey will be here as a moderator. And if you've got any questions about the magazine, the podcast, the website, articles, any of that kind of stuff, then Lainey will be there. And I am going to get Natasha. So Natasha Richardson is the founder of Forage Botanicals. And this again, it's so pretty. Look, look at this packaging. I'm a sucker for beautiful packaging. And look, I've even spotted my little raspberries on here. I bet raspberries do something for us hormonally. Raspberry leaves, maybe raspberry leaf tea. Anyway, this one I particularly like. It's called Inner Goddess. These are tinctures. Now, I haven't actually tried these yet. I wanted to chat to Natasha before I give them a go, but I will try them live with you. What I'm going to do, just so that you know, team, I'm going to turn off all my other forms of communication just to make sure that the Wi-Fi is super strong. OK, so if you need to chat to me, you're going to have to do it in the questions. All right. OK, so let's see if we can get Natasha with us. Um, are you there? Yeah, I think maybe you are here. Let me chat, Natasha. I think Forage Botanicals, you need to request to join me. If you request to join, then I accept you. Okay. Hi there, Annie. Nice to see you. Where is everybody? Anybody else in Wales? I have to say, I was hoping for maybe a little bit of sun. It's not there yet. It's kind of grey, but it's it's warm and I've got a little wood burner in my little hut, so I'm absolutely fine. <laughs> uh, nice to see you. OK, request to join. Where are we, Forage? I have written about herbs and plant extracts, plant oils for more than 30 years. It's been a real foundation, a cornerstone, actually. And what's lovely now is to see so much of the clinical science and the evidence actually supporting what we've known traditionally for many many years hello very nice to see you whereabouts in the world are you Sasha? Um, i'm in bromley which some people will consider london and others would consider kent depends where you're from okay yeah so you know you've got a bit of countryside yeah. around you, haven't you so tell us a little bit about your background so you're a herbalist is that right yeah i am um i work trained as a medical herbalist and that means that i did a three-year-long um bsc honors in it and then part of that you take 500 hours of time with patients one-to-one -one before you graduate so it's quite arduous compared to some <laughs> yeah definitely and do you actually treat patients now are you, are you you know a practicing practitioner i don't personally, I focus on the products nowadays and we have a couple of herbalists who are as close to clones that I could get as the team. So if people give us Excellent. those complicated questions, we have people that can help. 
Oh, fantastic. Yeah, because I'm sure there will be and I'm sure there'll be there's always kind of personal medical information that people want. So it's great that there's a resource there. So tell me about forage. I have to say, you know, the first thing is I'm super struck by your packaging. Thank it's so you. pretty. And I'm so tempted. I, do, I don't kind of know which which tincture to go for because they all look so beautiful. There's radiance. Uh, inner goddess I kind of fancy channeling my inner goddess and premenstrual peace well I'm, I'm thankfully beyond <laughs> premenstrual but I know I know that you've got some stuff for menopausal peace as well haven't yeah. you? <laughs> uh, the inner goddess drops is a is a wonderful one for most people because it has herbs that are like tonics for the for a female reproductive system so you can't really go wrong with them the only caution that we put on them is to not use them when you're trying to conceive and during pregnancy um, but they're great for things like regulating the cycle helping people to lessen the flow if it's particularly heavy and some people say like wild things like it helped them to get in contact with their inner goddess and then it helped them to Ooh. unleash their their sex drive that they'd forgotten they have and oh my gosh and I like say <laughs> I think that might be a bit of TMI. I'm not going to quite share that one. But this has got a couple of lovely things that you've highlighted. I'm sure there are other things in here. But mugwort and rose. Rose, I know, as being a very feminine compound. It's used a lot in, you know, infertility and, and beauty. And it's kind of it has a synergy, yeah. doesn't it, with kind of female hormones. Mugwort, bless it, doesn't actually sound quite so glamorous. What, what is mugwort? It. Where does it come from and, and, and what does it do? Um, it's a another traditional women's herb that gets used in balancing hormones um a lot of the herbs that are in there we don't know like what specific hormonal effect they have they're called tonics which means that you kind of can't go wrong with them and they are are more often than not employed in helping the womb to shrink back to its original size after pregnancy but okay. as a side effect of that also help with like period pains as well because they're helping the muscle Ooh. to act in a concerted way in um and so it helps relieve pain interesting i mean my girls will be super interested in that and of course these are natural botanical remedies you've got no contraindications they're, they're fine to be just taking throughout the day you know to sip them in water well the only one that i i would give with that one is that mugwort shouldn't be used during pregnancy or when you're trying okay. to conceive yeah okay well that that ship sailed a long time yeah. ago so that is fine um i'm gonna pop them into my water how many drops do i need so with that one we recommend three just three drops so if you're au fait oh. with tinctures already you can put it directly on the tongue okay yeah right. because well, the taste I'm is gonna, like I'm a gonna... strong rose taste but because of the alcohol content it can be a bit surprising to some <laughs> you know i'm just going to try a drop on my tongue and then I can try it. it's a it. nice bright liquid rose taste oh yes roses i love rose and you oh my gosh don't eat much. that is yeah that is really strong that is potent i can tell that you've you put the real thing in here yeah so i'm, yeah. I'm assuming it's all proper herbs it's not synthetic no there's nothing compounded. synthetic it's all herbs that have been soaked in alcohol and then extracted after a month-long period usually um and there's nothing added to that. The alcohol that's in it is a natural preservative, so you don't need anything else. The only thing is that if you don't want to have alcohol, then you probably don't want to have the tinctures. <laughs> right, fair enough. And then you could have a tea, which I've also, I've been brewing some tea, so we'll come on to that in just a moment. So the forage range, you basically, you've got tinctures, you've got teas. How did all that start? Was it because you were a herbalist and you needed to have things that you were giving your patients? Well, it actually started with me struggling with my own period pain. Um, whilst I was still studying and I was being told at the time there's really not much we can do for you you could take more painkillers or you could go on a contraceptive yeah. pill and I didn't really want to do those so during my three-year-long degree uh, people were saying you know herbs could help herbs could really help with this and I was like oh maybe, maybe that's what I should do <laughs> and I was really surprised by... <laughs> yeah. I was really surprised by how much it helped i didn't think that it would stop it completely i thought that it would just take you know the top edge off it um but yeah sure enough after giving it a good three months i would say i didn't have yeah. the pain anymore and really yeah 
that is quite astonishing. So I'm looking here, I'm thinking about my girl. So Lily, she's 32, Brella is 22. Both of them struggle and they, they both talked about it. And I think they probably inherited from me because I used to get really bad period pain. This is premenstrual piece. Um, and this one I can see has got passiflora, which is that lovely kind of soporific calming herb. I take that in the evening sometimes. Lovely. And licorice, which is also a very super interesting herb. Is that something that would be good for, for younger women then? Yeah. So I would use those PMS drops, ironically, every day to prevent getting PMS. Um, okay. The herbs that are in there, as you said, are very relaxing and calming and the licorice is adaptogenic. So it helps you to deal with quite intense stress on a day to day basis okay. so that when it comes to the premenstrual phase, it's not so much of a bother. Yeah. 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 I really like licorice. I've been doing a lot of research actually into it's got very, very interesting properties um, yeah. and passiflora, which is the passion flower super good for chilling out you know you find in a lot of herbal teas don't you that you can take at the end of the day mm. again ad adaptogenic helping to calm could you have this just as a sort of a calm me down drop i'm actually going to try a drop see what it tastes like yeah so although it's marketed specifically at pms what's kind of might take you all by surprise is that there's nothing in there to affect hormones because mm -hmm. the premenstrual phase is it's best to think of it like a magnifier on life whatever you're already experiencing it heightens so if you can reduce your stress on a day-to-day -day basis then it's going to be better during the premenstrual phase which means that really anyone could be using this in a short term i'm going through something stressful and i just need something to help me calm down okay so just having that as a daily kind of adjunct to well-being balancing feeling better about yourself helping your body to cope better perhaps with aggressors that are coming at you from whatever source whether they're physical or emotional stressful yeah i mean most of the time people don't realize just how well they're coping with the stress that they're under and so it's hard to recognize how stressed we really are we've just got so used to running at that level and um, right. so it's nice to to have people taking it preventatively but also keep it in your handbag have it with you so if you're feeling really panicky then you can take it i wish i had some lectures with me today before coming on live it would have been so oh, good honey, you're fine you're doing a fantastic job you're looking and sounding great um <laughs> and then this one here radiance my gosh i'm going to be so tinctured up in a minute this is marigold and burdock Burdock's kind of one of those interesting, really old-fashioned heritage herbs, isn't it? You, you talk yeah. about people drinking dandelion and burdock in, in the old days. What, what Burdock is that dark leafy yeah. green thing that grows in the vegetable patch? And they're huge and they're really bothersome for people that don't want them because they can get enormous, like two feet long tap roots on them. Wow. And, but the place where you can buy that tap brew as a food is in Asian supermarkets. They use it in their, their traditional cooking all the time. Um, really? It's great. I didn't know that. Yeah. So what, what, like, like, a, like a radish type thing? Yeah, so you'll, you'll see it and it'll look like a horseradish. That's the most similar thing that we'd have in like a waitrose um, is the oh. horseradish. Yeah, long, white, pale. Um, and when I have given it to people who have been fed those traditional foods in their in their family, family, they recognise the burdock taste. They're like, "Oh yeah, that woody taste! Like I, I never get to taste that otherwise." Um, oh, it's really a lovely, nourishing bitter them. herb. And bitter herbs have special properties, don't yeah. they? They help us to upregulate our liver capacity so that we are detoxing much faster than we would be without them. But they also help us to increase our bile, which means that we're absorbing things better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that little tiny bile duct is, is so important. And I think a lot of the kind of the tonics that we used to take traditionally, or if you, you know, if you go to the continent, they'll have an aperitif maybe before dinner, particularly before a big kind of blowout dinner, might be like Campari or Aperol or something like that. They are quite bitter. Yeah. And the idea, isn't it, is that you stimulate the liver and, and the bile into producing those those um, enzymes that are going to help process and digest food more easily. Yeah, absolutely and burdock has some fantastic research around it now around its ability to help us to balance insulin um, as well which has got a lot of potential especially we're looking at it now as herbalists for helping people with leaky gut syndrome and things like that so 
has oh. amazing capacity. So the radiance, you've made this with burdock and marigold. Are you, are you using those little orange flowers or do you use the, the, the root or the leaf? It's the orange flowers that you use in marigold, not the rest of the herb. Yeah, um, it's a wonderful skin healing herb. I'm sure you've seen it in so many houses. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I mean, it was one of the ingredients I used way back when I used to, you know, be with the beauty brand. Yeah. Absolutely. Calendula, very skin soothing, very calming. You can use calendula ointment, can't you? One like irritated skin. Yeah. And internally it helps to heal the gut. And we think in, in herbal medicine mm -hmm. about the gut and the skin being really closely linked. So when we're mm -hmm. helping our digestive system and our gut, then we should be helping our skin to clear as well. And that's really what this tincture is for. It's yeah. for helping people who are getting monthly breakouts, traditionally mm -hmm. on the on the chin or along the jawline. And yeah, this is a really, yeah, and they can just like come and go with the cycle yeah. or they can, they tend to sit mm -hmm. underneath the skin, the surface, uh, skin surface and never really mm -hmm. get to a head, but they're painful, they're the worst. Ooh. Ooh, I quite like that. That's, um, yeah, I can taste the marigold or like kind of nasturtiums, yeah. which I think are a similar family. Are they? You can use those in salads, can't yeah, you? Because they've got that lovely pepper kind of tang. You can tang. use marigolds in flower, uh, flowers in foods as well. Yeah, and now we, I've just seen a question here about which one was for stress. We were talking particularly about premenstrual peace because that's got the passiflora yeah. and the licorice in it. But actually, you think that you could take this around with you as kind of a, like a little dropper of stress relief when you just need to have a little bit yeah, of something. Absolutely, especially at that tiny dose that we're recommending because you don't need a lot for herbs to work. As soon as they touch your tongue and you're getting the taste, then your whole nervous system is reacting to that. Gosh, just with those one one or two drops I've put on my tongue. I mean, I have to say, I'm feeling good. So, you know, I'll, I'll give you credit for that. And in, in this glass of water, I just put the recommended dose, which was just three drops. I mean, that is that is quite powerful stuff, isn't it? Yeah, I don't like to recommend people to have huge doses when it comes to over-the-counter stuff. Um, it's just yeah. too risky. When it comes to herbal medicine, they're very safe and the kind of side effects that you might get are really minimal compared to things that like we accept with like the contraceptive pill. But <laughs> I'd still rather not have make people feel even a tiny bit sick. <laughs> so yeah, we work with yeah. the doses that I know works and that is completely safe. Yeah. So those are the tinctures. Now I mentioned that you've also got teas. Um, and by the way, I have to say thank you very much. You've given us 15% off everything, which is brilliant. I mean, as long as your order's over £10. I mean, your yeah, so hardly anything. Price. Yeah, just make sure yeah. you've got a postage sorted, really. <laughs> exactly. Otherwise, it's going to cost you money to send yeah. it out. I mean, they are very reasonable and British, efficacious, lovely, fab mm -hmm. female founder. If you're interested in herbs, then, you know, seriously, I suggest heading to you. Forage Botanicals, are you? What's your website? Yeah. Forage Botanicals, it's .co.uk. Brilliant. So I had uh, two of these teas, which I brought with me. So I've got Cool and Calm, which I thought sounded really nice. This is Lemon, Verbena, Peppermint and Sage. Mm. Really interesting yeah. herb, isn't it, Sage? Um, and then there's also Soothe and Comfort, which is Nettle and Chamomile, which I thought I might try a little bit later on. But just before we went live, I have brewed myself um, a pot of cool and calm tea because it says on here clear your mind and calm your nerves so <sighs> prepare to be calm so in my little cabin here i've got this dinky little teapot isn't that cute oh, sweet. and a really little vintagey mug and somewhere yeah let me go i actually prepared found a tea strainer so i'm just gonna pour that i love it what's that most people are not as well camera quick to view Oh my, well, 30 years of live telly, that's, uh, uh, I'm getting, getting caught out a few times. Um, okay, so, I don't know if you can see, uh, you can just about see that in there, that lovely kind of herbally brew. Oh, it smells nice, that's the peppermint that I'm smelling. So why have you put this combination together? So this says lemon verbena, peppermint and sage. So how are those working to keep us kind of calmer? So um, the lemon verbena and lemon balm that's in it are relaxing herbs. Mm -hmm. And the sage is there as a phytoestrogen to help people with the hot flushes. And then we have peppermint, which is ultimately super cooling, you know, <laughs> straight on the tongue. Yeah, and, and actually sage has clinically been shown 
to help not everybody but a statistically significant number of women with hot flashes yeah. and what's so nice about phytoestrogens is that unlike other herbs that have hormonal effects you can't go wrong with a phytoestrogen because of how they work in our bodies they're much less potent than the estrogens we create ourselves which means that if you have zero estrogen to begin with and you have a herb that contains phytoestrogens like sage then you're going to relatively increase what you were started with whereas if you've got too much of your own estrogen knocking around and you have a phytoestrogen it will come and take up space in a receptor and stop your estrogen from getting in so it will relatively That's reduce amazing. it yeah so it's like an adaptogenic estrogen because effect. it's balancing yeah so you don't have to worry then if you're concerned about overdoing it with estrogenic activity. No. The herb is going to come in there and, and know kind of intuitively within the body what to do. That's that's super clever. I have to say, looking at the research into adaptogens from somebody who, you know, I'm always very evidence based and I'm, I'm skeptical of the, of the woo woo and the nonsense, but actually researching it, there is a lot of credibility there. I mean, not least because these traditions are rooted in thousands of years of traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, you know, long before our modern synthetics started. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they say that two thirds of our drugs originally come from chemicals that came out of the plant. Yeah, yeah. But the problem is they isolate just that one little compound and that then can trigger side effects because you're not having the complete plant, whereas presumably you're kind of steeping the entire leaf. Yeah. Yeah. and absorbing all of that in the tincture or in the tea yeah and one of the nicest examples of that is that when it comes to aspirin you get the side effects that if you have too much then you can cause like stomach ulcers but if you have meadow sweet which naturally contains the same chemical it doesn't do that it has other chemicals in it that protect the gut lining gosh that's so fascinating i remember meadow sweet when lily was really getting such terrible migraines that was one of the herbs that was recommended mm. for her yeah, lovely. I still use it to this day with people, patients who have endometriosis. I will recommend it to people that come up with that. Yeah, just you oh know what's going to work with them. But. <laughs> and your website, I have to say, after this live, if anybody's interested in herbs and looking at the, the therapeutic properties, do go and take a look because it's it's really fascinating. And you know, I always love founders that have real knowledge. You know, some some brands Thanks. you come across and it's kind of a marketing led kind of, oh, how can we make some cash? I know, let's launch a brand, you know, but when it comes from that place of authenticity of somebody who's walked that journey themselves, often with a health condition, like you were yeah. saying, who's been there, you know, has walked in their customer's shoes and knows what they want and what they want to expect from something. Because presumably these are things that you're using yourself yeah. every day. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, once you've, I find that with herbalists, and probably this is true of like most um, healthcare practitioners, whatever you struggle with, you tend to attract more of. So all of my patients then for like 10 years were women struggling with period pain or whatever else, like reproductive health problems. Yeah. And I'd hardly yeah. ever see anyone with like a digestive issue. <laughs> so what about then for the second half of our lives, for, for perimenopause, for menopause, midlife and beyond what would your recommendation be kind of generally something that we could all perhaps take as a tonic and feel better for i mean i think that sage is quite a good one because it is balancing in that way and it's readily available you could literally be buying it in the supermarket and pouring boiling water on it um if you don't have access to anything else then that would be helpful right. but in terms of getting a medicinal dose this is where we often fall short when it comes to a fresh plant, you want to have probably five sage leaves covered in boiling water and you must cover it to get the full effect. With sage- oh, Really, why is that? Because, because it releases through the- skin. It has essential oils, volatile oils. You're losing them if you don't cover it. So it's very important. When you've brewed yours in a teapot, then that's perfect. Mine covered. I should be sipping that all through the afternoon and thinking of you. And then the tinctures, which would you suggest, suggest the, the inner goddess? I have to say the mugwort and the rose, that's kind of doing it for me at yeah, the moment. Lovely. I think that everyone can be using that for helping with balancing their hormones. What I initially kind of created it for was a little bit more woo-woo. I wanted to help people who were wanted to connect to their womb, to their menstrual cycles and, and start to feel more empowered about being female, really. 
Yeah, that feminine energy, it's, it's a powerful thing, um, you know, for women, I think, to be able to channel into it in the best way, mm -hmm. just as we want our guys to, you know, channel into the best parts of maleness and masculinity. You know, there's so much talk about toxic masculinity, but actually yeah. that balance, you know, that the male and the female energy and, you know, and how they're meant to be complimentary and supportive of each other, I think is, uh, is interesting. What about the guys then? Think, let's not leave the guys out of I, this. What, what, what can we actually, give our men? have given the guys in my life quite a lot of rest of resilience. Uh, this one. It's, okay. Uh, you were talking about adaptogens. This is adaptogenic. It's ashwagandha in it. That's the adaptogens. But I really like to focus on British plants. So it's, it's a third ashwagandha, but it's two thirds British plants. It's got oat tops and hawthorn in it. I'm sure you'd be familiar with hawthorn. Which grows yeah, so what's that going to do for our guys? I'm intrigued. So, well, funny enough, ashwagandha actually has research around it helping um, sperm motility and the quality of sperm count. So it's great for male fertility. Um, but as an adaption for everyone, it's helping us all to downregulate our stress response. And um, the adaptions were researched after World War II because the Russians basically wanted to make super soldiers who could be able to survive war and be able to live through it without getting such severe PTSD symptoms that they were all coming back from. Well, so they were doing ashwagandha long before other people in the Western world. Yeah, because they they started to research all of the herbs or traditions that were closest to them, and that's going to be the Chinese and Indian traditions, right? So they so to... use that with oat, oat tops, and what was the other one? Hawthorn. And no. what are their particular properties for, for guys? Well, they help to protect the nervous system. So when you're starting to feel like over the long term that you're getting maybe signs of fatigue or burnout, then that's mm. when we want to start using hawthorn and oat tops to help people recover. I used to find that I would have patients who had been stressed for so long that they actually didn't do well if they gave them certain adaptogens, they would be too stimulating and it would make them feel anxiety. So I always compliment my ashwagandha, which is a relatively relaxing um, adaptogen yeah. with herbs that coat the nervous system that help us to, I sort of imagine it's bubble wrapping people. <laughs> I love that. Just remind us the name of that one. I'm going to look that up on your website. Ashwagandha. And which which tincture is it in? It's in our rest of resilience, which you serve up like a like a latte. Oh, do you? Rest and resilience. Lovely. So yeah. you'd have it as a kind of bedtime drink, maybe, or, or guest morning it's drink. It's a lovely drink. Actually, drink. Talking, talking before we go, talk, talking of um, serving up lovely drinks. This looks like a real treat. This is raw drinking chocolate. It says Aunt Flo's raspberry and nettle raw drinking chocolate. What am I going to do with this? So people make this into chocolate. a drinking chocolate in those like, days where they, they know that their period is imminent and it helps to boost iron content of the blood. It's really rich in magnesium. It's got lots of essential vitamins in because of the nettle. Um, and it's like having a hundred percent cacao. It's extremely in your face with bitter chocolate. Taste. I love it. Can I just ask you a quick question about cacao? I recently um, was in the Lake District and I did some forest bathing and I was with this amazing um, practitioner and kind of guide and she did a cacao ceremony in the oh, middle of the forest. It was, it was actually quite magical. Yeah. It was kind of like a spiritual otherworldly experience. I'd love to reproduce it. Could I do that with this? I mean, could you just use this in, in a warm cacao drink and, and kind of channel your inner Yeah, you good absolutely vibes? could because it's of that quality that is used in a cacao ceremony. And you're getting the additional benefits of the nettle and raspberry leaf, which are helping to stop heavy periods, basically. But guys could drink this too. Would I be able to share it? Yeah, absolutely. There's no okay. ill effects for them. them. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that you're doing all these great things. And then lastly, the other thing, which I'm going to have to wait to use because I don't have a little bath uh, where I am here in this cabin. This is bath salt, cedarwood and bergamot. And I have to say the smell is absolutely incredible. I love bergamot. Oh, I love thank you. Grapes, so. Yeah, great. Oh. This, I mean, really this will be really good for, I mean, you said pre-menstrual me time, but, you know, I, I can use this presumably and still have a nice time. Absolutely.
Absolutely. I want people to be able to carve out me time because that's, you know, when we do our rest and relaxation is when we do our recovery as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's such a joy to talk to you. I'm absolutely loving your range. You know. I do suggest everybody go and has a look. Forage Botanicals co.uk you are super reasonably priced even more so with our 15 percent off liz loves look at that i mean what lovely presents to give girlfriends liz, well. do we have time to just cover our newest product well very quickly yeah because we are running out of time no, go 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 um so we've literally just launched it yesterday it's a cool and calm spritz to help people through the summer with their hot flushes Okay, go. What's in it? You'll love it. It's mostly rose water, proper rose water, as a result of making rose essential oil. So it smells amazing. And it's complemented with clary sage to help us to cool and relax. Yeah. And you just spritz that over you, like when you're traveling? Is it part of your skincare yes. routine? I keep just it, it in my handbag so that I've always got it. And I just use it like this along my chest and face when I'm out and about because it just sits there and any breeze comes along and cools you up. So nice. Oh, I love it. I actually, I'm in Wales at the moment and there's a lovely Welsh organic rose farm um, where they make proper rose, rose water and it is wow. the difference. You know, you can go to a, a chemist and buy rose water, but it's often synthetic or highly diluted. Um, but, uh, you know, for you to have a proper one, that yeah. sounds absolutely divine. And we're going to be channeling our inner goddess. I love that. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Um, Thanks so much for having me. I wish you all the best with your brand. It's it's lovely to hear from people like you who are doing the right thing. So thank you. <laughs> Enjoy your cabin in the woods. It sounds great. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm really, I'm channeling the vibe now with all of this stuff. It couldn't be more perfect. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, oh. my lovely. You have to just press the little white, um, white cross and then uh, you will disappear, but hopefully I will remain. Wasn't that lovely? What a charming lady. Uh, love all of that. So yeah, do go and check them out. And as I say, 15% off everything, every order over £10. So that just shows you how reasonable it is. It's really good. I'm going to be continuing to enjoy my tea and my tinctures. Mm. But before I go, <coughs> oh, went down the wrong way. Uh, before I go, just to say Kelsey skin, I'm being asked about that. Literally, I just put a face mask on before I started my live. Thought, do you know what? My skin actually looks okay so i'm not going to put any foundation on so the, this is just skin uh, and this is what i used it was the mother of masks that's the raspberry the raspberry oil that i was talking about with that fabulous founder from the british fruit growing farm in kent recycling upcycling their excess raspberries that are the wrong shape and size to sell to those picky supermarkets so what did they do they founded an amazing skincare brand built on raspberry seed oil and honestly the products are absolutely divine this is the other thing that i used actually on top i followed it with this it was the serum that he was talking about it's called morn to eve uh, it says global protection concentrate and yeah love it that's literally what i've got on my face and neck at the moment really really impressed so well done guys uh, and we've got a liz loves on that and it is a genuine liz loves because i love it 15 percent off that's kelseyskin.com something else that i brought with me uh and i have started to retake a bit more of this and that's the better you vitamin d because even though we've hopefully got a bit of sunshine and actually having kind of dissed the sun in in wales it has now come out so thank you son I'm still not absorbing very much. I go out in the early part of the day without any sunscreen on, but obviously in the rest of the day, I'm protecting my skin from, from burning and from aging. And I did a blood test recently just to check kind of where I was with my levels. And I was low and I thought, oh my gosh, I, you know, I spend time outdoors. I have, you know, the odd squirt of vitamin D, surely I'm okay, but actually it wasn't enough. So I've just rebought this. This is the Better You 3000 international units with k2 if you're taking vitamin d you do need to take it with k2 because it makes it more available so i love this because it tastes really great and you can just squirt it under your tongue mm, just like that sublingually they call that and it goes into the system uh, more quickly than having to break down a tablet 
very interesting studies if you go to their website you can have a look also on better you you can buy those little blood tests so you can check your own levels and um, they sell those pretty much at cost so we don't have a discount on those but they're definitely worth getting if you're interested but we do have 15 percent off everything else on better you so i have just used that actually to stock up loads for my family and for me that is it for today i'll be back with you live next tuesday um, really can't wait for that because I'm going to be joined by one of my very old friends who has created a brilliant British beauty brand. Super excited to share that with you. Uh, it'd be lovely, Kate, to have you with me if you're watching. But also just to say, if you haven't yet got your copy of the Liz Our Wellbeing magazine, don't forget that there is a fantastic Liz Loves offer on the Liz Our Wellbeing magazine. We've actually given ourselves a special offer. It's an amazing deal. Not actually quite sure how we've done it. But anyway, let's not look too much at that. We have done it and it's three issues for £10. So you get this issue and then the next two just to kind of tempt you in so that you can see everything that we're doing and free PMP. My gosh, um, don't tell the accountants. But yeah, that runs up until the 16th of July. So if you want that offer, go to lizourwellbeing.com. You'll see where it says buy a magazine and you use the same Liz Loves code to get that deal. 10 issues for £10. And when you think they're normally £6.99 each, you know, that is that is a real steal. So, but we can't do it for very long. So 16th of July, if you want to try it, that's it for today. Tomorrow, if you're watching me live, tomorrow is the day when we have the new podcast episode. So make sure that you're subscribed to that. However you listen to your podcast, whichever platform you're using. And of course, it's the Lizard Wellbeing editorial newsletter that comes into your inbox each and every Friday at around tea time. If you haven't got it by about five past four, do check your spam folder. Sometimes it gets held up in that, but we've got lovely ones. I've just signed it off actually, the one that's going out tomorrow. So it's, it's a really good one with some nice links and recipes and things that you'll want to try. So I look forward to seeing you back live. In the meantime, if you'd like to follow my journey here in my little meadow cabin, I will be putting pictures later on Liz Me stories. So I hope you enjoy and I'm going to share some of the good vibes.